Next, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Evan Michelson. Evan's the program director at the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. He's responsible for overseeing the foundation's energy and environment program, an interdisciplinary research support program, which he's gonna describe more fully in his remarks. But he also manages another really cool project, uh, the foundation's grant making to the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, transformational international astrophysics research collaboration focused on exploring the evolution and structure of the universe, the formation of stars and galaxies, the history of the Milky Way, and the science behind black holes and dark matter, so kind of like real energy. Uh, he's also the uh, author of Philanthropy and the Future of Science and Technology, which was published in 2020. And he's really been a stalwart supporter of our efforts here at Duke. He's Sloan's liaison on efforts that supported the launch of our Energy Data Analytics Lab in 2015, and the fellows program that led to this symposium. So Evan provides not just financial support, which is greatly appreciated from Sloan, but really guidance on the substance of our program. He really embodies what we would call expert philanthropy by bringing his own expertise to the table to help guide our efforts. So Evan, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for the introduction, Brian. I appreciate it. I got to bottle that up and share it with our board, actually. This is great. <laughs> um, and you, you heard a little bit about the other role that I play, which is supporting the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which certainly sounds cool and is cool. Um, and for those of you that are not familiar with it, it's actually one of the first uh, applications of large-scale machine learning and data science in the natural sciences. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that, please go uh, to, our, to our website. But what I'm going to talk to you uh, about today um, is our program at the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and the Energy Environment Grant making that we do. So one of the things that people often ask is sort of, what do you do at the Sloan Foundation? How do you work? Um, so I'm going to hopefully try to answer that question a little bit today. So I'll start with some of the basics, uh, just to give you a sense of the, the landscape. So the Sloan Foundation was started uh, and founded by Alfred P. Sloan Jr. in 1934. Um, we are based in New York City. Uh, Sloan himself was the president and CEO of General Motors. Um, he actually started as uh, the owner of a small ball bearing company in Hoboken, New Jersey, uh, and then was acquired by GM and moved up the ranks um, and became uh, head of the company during its heyday. Uh, Sloan himself was really interested in scientific management. He wrote some of the first treatises about how you develop functional teams and organizations that were quite influential and are often taught in business schools, perhaps like this one here. Uh, we have about $2 billion in assets, and our annual grant making is about $90 million in total. While I know those numbers uh, sound big and are big in, in sort of uh, uh, on their own, in the context of both federal funding and even in the philanthropic landscape, they're actually quite modest, um, if not on the more uh, narrow side. So we think a lot about how do we use uh, both uh, our assets and our grant making to the greatest effect. Um, we're a little different than many other foundations that you might be familiar with. Uh, so we really focus on making grants to support original research and education related to science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and economics. We cover a whole gamut of topics in the basic sciences, natural sciences, engineering, social sciences, and even public understanding and outreach. Um, that's rather distinct and unusual. There are not many foundations out there across the country and even in the world that focus on science. So we're more like a federal funder um, in disposition, but have a lot of flexibility, which I think uh, gives us an opportunity to fund really interesting interdisciplinary work like what's going on here at Duke. Uh, our kind of value statement, I think, is really important um, because we really try to talk about this and live this every day, that we really believe that these fields and the people and the, the students and the practitioners that work in them really are the chief drivers of our nation's health and prosperity. And we believe that a reason systemic understanding of the forces of nature and society can lead to a better world for all. I know those, that may seem sort of really high level, but it's something we actually think a lot about when we think about individual projects and programs. Before I tell you a little bit about what we actually fund, I think it's also important to dive a little deeper into how we think about our funding, um, because I think it's really important in the philanthropic context. So as I mentioned before, we try to under approach our grant making to think about how do we have larger impact with relatively modest resources in the context of philanthropy and government. Um, so all the programs we have really try to identify and fill structural gaps in the funding landscape. We do try to be nimble, flexible, responsive. Um, that's, I think, one of the benefits of philanthropy sometimes compared to federal funding. Um, and we try to take a portfolio approach. 
uh, that includes sort of risky projects, things that haven't been tried, and speculative projects, things that you don't know the answer to, um, but uh, you'll probably learn something really interesting along the way. We think a lot about the health of the disciplines in which we work. Diversity, equity, inclusion is infused throughout every grant and program at the foundation. We also have a specific focus area on that, but it's really infused in everything we do. Um, we think a lot about how the work that we support produces public goods and open research practices that can be shared more broadly uh, among different stakeholders. And then we do think a lot about the ethical responsibility of our grant making, both the origins of our assets and how to use our philanthropic discretion most wisely. So this is a chart that shows what we fund, um, which is interesting, but I think also kind of doesn't tell the full picture. Uh, so we have a research portfolio, as, as you heard, I oversee our energy environment grant making and our work on the Sloan Digital Sky Survey. But we've got work that looks at the intersection between biology and physics, a new matter to life program, uh, some really interesting work on fundamental physics. Um, we have a large scale program on, in, on economics that supports foundational work in economics, economics research tools, um, a whole broad array of, of, of research. Uh, we have the Sloan Research Fellowship Program uh, that are, are awards for early career faculty. But we have a lot of other cross-cutting areas. Um, so we have a technology program. So if you've ever used Python, R, or Julia, those were all foundational technologies supported at one time by the Sloan Foundation. We think about the role of software for science, data and computational research, and the role of scholarly communication, professional societies, conferences, journals, things like that. Um, we have a, a large public understanding of science program. Most people outside of universities, when they, if they know about the Sloan Foundation, they know about us through pu the public understanding program. So if you've seen the movie Hidden Figures, the Sloan Foundation supported the book that that was based on. If you saw the movie Oppenheimer, the Sloan Foundation supported the, um, the biography of American Prometheus that was written 20 years ago. We also have really interesting stuff across theater, radio, film, things like that. Like I said, we have a really strong focus on diversity, equity, inclusion in STEM higher education. We have a distinct program on that. I actually believe Duke is one of the university centers of exemplary mentoring, uh, a large scale grant making program that my colleague leads. Um, and as I said, we think about diversity, equity, inclusion throughout our grant making. And then we have some work we do in New York City. So our program in the energy environment uh, area, as you heard, is really to inform the societal transition toward low carbon energy systems in the United States by investigating a range of different topic areas, economic issues, environmental, technological, and distributional. We really try to cover a broad range of issues in the energy system from energy markets and policy analysis, energy technology innovation, transportation mobility, uh, like I said, a, a substantial focus on energy and distributional equity, a lot of work on industrial decarbonization and energy system resilience. Um, and a little bit to what Brian said, we also think a lot about the kinds of projects that we support. So in our program, we really emphasize advancing interdisciplinary social science research and interdisciplinary research that links social science uh, scholars with those in engineering and basic and natural science as well. So the canonical grants in our program really are interdisciplinary, integrative, collaborative grants that are cut across different uh, institutions, um, different, use different methodologies, involve uh, practitioners from different fields and sectors. We really emphasize leadership by early and mid-career researchers and put a lot of emphasis on student training. A lot of our grants really work to integrate uh, real-world data and research um, uh, with, within the scholarly process and then disseminating that information for decision-making. As I said, try to find work that is timely and gap-filling. And then we really like to work with other foundations. So we have a lot of projects, and I'll talk a little bit about one of them where uh, we uh, try to uh, co-fund work with other funders um, who might be interested in supporting research as well. So I just wanted to highlight a little bit of some of the things that have come out of our program. Um, this list could go on uh, for much longer, uh, but there are some important outcomes and outputs that I think are, are sort of indicative of the kind of work that we've done uh, within our program. So we've supported a lot of the work on the social cost of carbon. Uh, that, uh, that's taken place. We've supported some of the work at the Open Energy Outlook that Joe was previously involved in. Um, we have a program through the National Bureau of Economic Research that links scholars with, uh, that are doing policy relevant research with decision makers at EPA, DOE, and other federal agencies. Um, we have a network that, uh, of researchers that looks at the intersection between the digital economy and the environment, so uh, the role of energy in uh, sort of the digital world that we're all living in. 
Um, if you've seen and read the latest National Academy's Accelerating Decarbonization Report, it's only 650 pages. Um, uh, the first one was close to 300, uh, so there's about 1,000 pages there. Uh, we've been uh, foundational supporters of that effort. That was released about uh, a week ago. Um, there was a new report that was released uh, just a few days ago from the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, which is actually more of a, uh, a, a summary and an analysis of how you uh, a, a apply energy and climate solutions in communities. Um, uh, that, that's really quite relevant. And then we've had a number of open calls for letters of inquiry. Some of you might have seen these. We've done them on energy efficiency, transmission and distribution, electrification, uh, energy equity. Um, so people are also always asking sort of, what are you interested in now? So we're interested in that, that whole gamut of topics that I mentioned from markets and industrial decarbonization, technology innovation, transportation, mobility, energy. Um, but we also um, will often kind of emphasize a few topics uh, for a period as we go forward. So there are two efforts that are open. You are uh, a welcome and we encourage you to uh, apply if you're interested in. Um, so one of our current areas of focus is on interdisciplinary research on critical minerals and metals. Obviously, that's a really relevant and timely topic. Lots of folks are thinking about it and doing it, um, but we think that there are some interesting research gaps. So one is we have an open call out for projects that are interdisciplinary, that are uh, look to bring social science research together uh, with folks from different fields, from, from scholarship uh, with, with the natural sciences engineering, to look at interdisciplinary research projects on minerals and metals in the United States. The other thing we have open at the moment is we collaborate with a small foundation in Tucson called Research Corporation for Science Advancement. Um, uh, Research Corporation does a series of what they call silogs. That's a combination of science and dialogue. That's for early career faculty in uh, the natural sciences. So if you're a chemist, engineer, uh, life cycle analyst, um, biologist, physicist, um, we are partnering with them with a, on a project also on minerals, metals, and materials. Um, and there, uh, there's the possibility for small grant awards to be made through a conference series that will be starting in 2024. So I'll just take another minute or two, if that's possible, just to talk about how we think about our, uh, how we think about proposals and projects that we support. So these are four questions that really frame all of our grant making. We think about what can we learn, right, with the substantive and the topics uh, that, are, that are being researched. We think a lot about who participates, the diversity of the community, as I said, the health of the community, um, how that research is done, the ability to share results and software and hardware openly, uh, the use of administrative data. Um, we think about technology and scholarly communication, and then we think about the policy relevance um, and the sort of decision relevance of all that work. Um, and I think that all the work that's been done here um, through the uh, uh, Energy Data Analytic Analytics Lab with the fellowships and the conference series that you mentioned really embody all aspects of this. You're touching on really important topics. You're building the next generation of scholars. You're doing it in a way that's really um, integrative and, and open, um, and it clearly has decision relevance and policy relevance. Uh, so I want to thank everyone here. Um, I'll, I'll mention, you know, at, at a foundation, you really are only as good as your grantees. So uh, in addition to Duke, I'm pleased that Morgan is currently a grantee of ours at Sloan and that Joe was previously a grantee of ours at the Sloan Foundation. Um, uh, so I really want to thank you all. I'm excited to be here. I'm looking forward to learning over the course of the conference. Thanks so much.